Suzette was very close to her mother, and when she disappeared within a few days, her mother became worried, and she contacted John Robinson, whose number Suzette had left. Uh, all I got was a, I got a little note, like a postcard thing, and saying that they were they were off on uh, off on their adventure. They are trying to communicate with him to get him to sort of admit, where's Suzette? What happened to Suzette, you know? Is she still around? I brought along a tape recorder and showed her how to use it. And we were hoping to you know, orchestrate with her some sort of phone conversation where Carolyn could get some information that would help us understand what happened to Suzette, help us understand what else may be going on? We haven't heard anything in a couple of weeks, and I'm really getting nervous. Oh, I'm, don't, don't, you know, I wouldn't get nervous. John Robinson told her that Suzette had actually left with someone else, that she didn't take the job, and she was going to go away with someone else and travel the world. I'm nervous. Susie always calls me, so. Well, I, from what I understand, they're, they're on a boat somewhere. It's kind of, kind of hard to call. And in that conversation, you're able to hear, almost even see, John's wheels turning. Mom's calling about her missing daughter. How do I cover for this? I am really getting very nervous about this. I don't know if I should maybe call the police or something. Why? Well, because I haven't heard from her, and that's not well, how Hon, she's a big girl. You can hear him skip a few beats and be a little bit stressed about this conversation that he's having, and then very quickly get his game on and kind of turn into the smoothest silk. I wouldn't worry, I'm, I'm sure they're fine. I hope so. I think they're probably having a uh, having a wonderful time and making- And you don't think that I should like notify somebody or something? Why? Uh, I wouldn't, you know, I really wouldn't, uh, wouldn't worry about it too much. I'm sure that when when they hit the next place, they'll, uh, they'll send us a card or call us or email us or something. It was chilling because he had answers for everything. He didn't skip a beat. He called her hun and warmed her up and made her believe that her daughter was on the trip of a lifetime. Soon in the investigation of Suzette Troughton's disappearance, family members began receiving letters. Some of these letters came from Kansas City. Then other letters came from California. Relatives would actually get birthday cards from Suzette, you know, I remember your birthday, blah, blah, blah. But all along they said, this is not the way Suzette writes. In fact, in one of the letters that they received, one of the dog's names was misspelled, and they knew Suzette would not misspell the name of her dogs. John Robinson had a uh, shtick that he used with these women. I'm going to be taking you traveling, we're going to be sailing on my yacht, or we're going to fly to Europe. When Robinson told one of his employees or, or mistresses, you're going on a trip, that was, was not a good thing. You're going to be so busy on this trip, I want you to write some letters right now. Here's some blank pieces of paper, sign your signature to them. So we'll have those ready. He would actually get these women to write these letters, sign blank pieces of paper with their signatures. As part of the investigation, we decided we were going to pull his trash at his home. We would get the trash, switch out trash bags, and bring it back to the station. Now, the first time we pulled his trash, we had one sack of nothing but shredded documents. We actually had tables where people were putting shredded pieces of paper together, taping them together. And it was a bonanza because one of the documents we put together was a storage locker in Raymore, Missouri. They started surveilling this storage unit very closely. They wanted to see him going in or out. Why did he have this? What was going on there? What was in this storage unit? He was bringing in women from all over the country. I mean, you put them up in these uh, hotels. It was nerve-wracking 
When these women would come to town, we'd have people following John Robinson. The investigators would rent uh, the, the adjoining room in a hotel um, when he was having one of his trysts with one of these women. And we'd have this little fear that something might go wrong. We had a contingency plan for um, if he drove one up and down to his farm in Lacine. We didn't want him taking somebody down there and killing him while we were developing this case. Towards the end of the investigation, we learned that there was a young female that he was trying to lure down to the farm. And that's when we decided that we have enough and we're not going to let it go any further. And we thought it's time to pull the plug. Robinson was taken into custody at the Santa Barbara Estates Mobile Home Park in Olathe, where he lives with his wife. Two detectives went up, knocked on his door, and was invited in and talked to him. They escorted him out in handcuffs. 56-year-old John E. Robinson is accused of aggravated sexual battery of two out-of-town women he met on the internet and taking more than $500 worth of sex toys from one of them. Further charges are anticipated in this matter within the next few days. They arrested him. They were escorting him out. And he said, well, you guys are making a big deal out of this. They then took him to the police station, showed him some of the pictures and some of the stuff we had already on him. He lost a little color. He turned a little white. The, the weight of, of his history was coming to bear on him right then, I think, in that moment. And, oh my gosh, they know. He called a lawyer and said, we need to talk. Investigators know that John Robinson has killed many women at this point, but they don't have enough to convict him. The clock is ticking to build a case and fast, because this is a man who's gotten himself out of a lot of difficult situations, and they know that if they don't find these bodies, that he's gonna get away with it again, and he's gonna kill again. We had a lot of information that led towards it, but to the actual murders, no. We didn't have anything. Heather's birth mother was killed by a serial killer, but it gets even worse because we're about to discover the secret connection between Heather and her mother's killer, and it's all in the family. What was the adopted family's relationship to Robinson? We're not releasing that. What is the actor they referred to these people? I mean, obviously, they knew him. Um, they've known him for a long time. When we found out that who it was that was raising our niece, it's just an unbelievable story, isn't it? One of the most mind-blowing revelations about this story was to find out who was raising Heather all of these years. What is it like to have a convicted serial killer in your family? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.